Hey everybody, welcome to this week's stream. Hope you're doing good today. So we are gonna be doing something I love doing. We're gonna be casting some real candy canes in resin. I love these ones. These are one of my favorite like holiday blanks to make. Uh, I usually make them every year. Uh, so today what we're gonna use is amazing clear cast um, for these. Um, I like that it has, you know, like that extra, the added UV inhibitor in it, uh, especially compared to Illumilite Clear uh, and Clear Slow, which to be honest, it's not like it yellows like overnight or anything like that. It actually stays clear for, for quite a while, but it will yellow faster than something that's got, you know, more UV inhibitor in it. So um, that's the way to go. I think uh, the other nice thing is you have a little bit more working time. So, you know, technically you could line up a ton of these, uh, you know, these uh, molds. Um, and I'm just using PVC pipes. You could use all kinds of different things. I think someday I wanna get some stopper uh, molds, um, but I don't think anybody makes like the, the sizes, the dimensions that I would want. Um, so eventually I'll have to make my own. That's why I don't have one, but uh, it'd be nice to have like a silicone mold where you can make like a ton of them at once. Um, so someday down the road, I might do that, but uh, pretty good uh, option. I, you know, the amazing ClearCast Plus, uh, make sure the Plus version um, is the one with the UV inhibitor. Um, and I think, uh, I don't know, maybe if anybody else uses Total Boat, I don't use that. Uh, actually, Philip, do you know if uh, Total Boat has UV inhibitor in it? Um, that's something I don't, I just don't know about that product that much. Um, Liquid Diamonds, I think, does a little bit. I'm just, it's it, the, the biggest, the toughest thing is it's really difficult to compare one epoxy to another with UV inhibitors because there's no standard testing or there's no way to say, oh, this is better. Um, supposedly, Illumilite put a lot of UV inhibitor in it and they've made many claims about that. So that's why I'm saying, you know, with the, uh, the ACC, uh, you know, Amazing Clearcast Plus, um, it has quite a bit, according to them. And so far I have done testing. Um, I made a gear shift knob and left it in my truck, you know, for a year basically, and it didn't yellow at all. So seems like it's pretty good. I don't know. <laughs> That's good enough for me, I guess. Um, I know I'm feeling crazy. I figured you'd love it, Kim. Um, in the Christmas spirit, yeah. Oh, I love doing these ones. Oh, I was kind of sitting around between the, the streams and I had everything ready. So I was like, let's fire it up and go. Their maker epoxy does for sure. Two to one, not sure. Yeah, it's kind of tough. Some some of them do, some of them don't. Um, you know, who knows? Um, but, uh, you know, if you can, if you're going to be doing things that are clear, um, you know, not a bad idea to, to grab something that you know has a little bit of extra UV inhibitor in it. Um, so all I did was I went down to the store, actually Gretchen <laughs> got these for me. Um, and these are just the mini candy canes, you know, the standard ones that you see everywhere. Um, and then, like I said, we're going to be using clear PVC pipes and then uh, the, the, the plugs from Turner's Warehouse. And I'm pretty sure, I, I don't know for 100,000% sure, but I'm pretty sure that Turner's Warehouse has, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the, I know Turner's Warehouse has this. I'm pretty sure that I put links to Turner's Warehouse in the, the description. Uh, I think I'm just going to go get a link for you guys for the... Um, they, the Turner's Warehouse now sells the clear PVC pipes as well as the, um, oh, what am I doing? Um, as well as the plugs. So let me see if I can find these. Look for PVC. There we go. So you just need to scroll through and all, all of the plugs and the PVC pipes are all on the same page. So I'm just gonna link you to the, the, like the main page and then you just select, um, there's a drop down menu and you can select plugs, pipes, or plug and pipes um, from one drop down menu. And then there's um, all kinds of different options for, for pipes. So let's see here, they've got, yeah, one and a half, they got three quarter inch clear and four inch clear. All right, so they got all the all the different things you need, and then plugs they got from half inch all the way up to four inch. All right, so let me let me go grab the link. This is a, an affiliate link, just to let you know. So if you need to pick these guys up, there's a link for you, and it, and it helps out the show, and it doesn't cost you a dime. So let's see here, who was here first? That's that's the big question here. Mike McEwen was here, and then Kim. Nice. 
and Clyde's here and Lelia. Good to hear that you're you're starting to heal up. Hopefully they'll get better really quick. Um, and Karen's here, and we got Copper Owl, and who else? Let's Mark. Girl in here. Phillips here. Did I miss anybody? I might have missed somebody. Jen's here too. Nice. One of your spear molds, that would be pretty sweet. That would be really cool, definitely. Oh, and Carrie's here, too. You finally get to watch the live. Nice. Well, welcome to the live. It's fun. And Jeremy's here, too. Cool. I may or may not have been here. <laughs> or may, not, may or may not be here. And Paul just showed up. All right, so uh, a couple little announcements. Number one, I'm going to be using Micro Starlight Glitter. So I'm just going to drop a link. I know there's a link in the description already for this one. Um, so there's a link to that. And then the other thing is, so we did the, the holiday glitter um, blanks, and then uh, we did the, you know, turned one of the pens um, on Saturday. And so thing was, I only had three blanks, uh, three extras that I would, for the, like the website. And I was like, that kind of sucks, like only having three. So I made another batch. So there's uh, the first three actually already went, um, but there's seven more uh, available on my website. Last I saw, I added seven this morning. So if anybody wants holiday glitter pin blanks, um, they are available. Plus there's, and I'm just linking to, well, the link in the description is to just all the holiday theme blanks. There's a pumpkin pie kind of pumpkin spice theme one. Um, holiday pine cones, uh, like a kind of a candy cane looking swirl thing with a 3D print in it, and maybe one more. So there's a few of the limited editions, and when they're gone, they're gone. I'm not going to make more this year. Uh, but here's a link to the holiday glitter. Uh, like I said, seven left. Um, I wanted to make sure that a, a few people seemed kind of bummed out that they weren't going to get some, and the, a lot of people really like that pen. So we got a few more available up there for you guys. Let's see here, did I miss anything else? <laughs> Jeremy's pleading the fifth, yep. Covered in glitter, ornament craft project, that's fun. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm half the time I'm covered in it. Um, so again, we're gonna be using Amazing Clearcast Plus. Now this stuff is pretty thick um, viscosity. It's like, I don't know, it's like thin honey. Um, and so one thing that I forgot to do. I didn't think about this. I need to go grab a link to this product. Eventually I'm going to do a video on this. Um, I just haven't gotten to it yet. One little little tip or one thing that can kind of help if you have a thick resin. So a lot of times people will say, oh, if it's thick, then you can like, some people recommend putting it in like a double boiler kind of setup where like you'd have like a pot of water and then another cup inside of that and it just seems super complicated and i don't have a kitchen here anyway so i've never done that and, it, and i don't like water around resin so there's a lot of reasons why i don't use that kind of thing but you can just heat up the resin and it will you know the the, the warmer the actual resin is the thinner the viscosity is going to be and so um, one thing that i found that i think is really cool and it works really well um, and i really wish that i would have used it or <laughs> done it um, uh, you can get the reptile heating pad things and they work fabulously for this. You just basically stick your, your things on it and, uh, and that's it. And you're ready to go. Like it just warms it up from the bottom up. So I'm going to get a link real quick and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Also, I just, I wanted to kind of give you the idea and then we'll go for this overhead cam. So there, you know, there's a few um, there's a few resins out there that are pretty thick. Alumalite clear, slow, and clear. That one's a pretty thin one. Liquid diamonds is super thin, um, but there are a few epoxies out there that are pretty darn thick. Um, and even deep pour from alumalite, that's a thin viscosity. So all this is, it's just like this little heating pad, and it's made to be like to have stuff kind of sitting on it. It's for like lizard tanks, you know, or whatever. And you just plug it in and then there's a dial and you'll probably have to play around with this to kind of you know dial in the right perfect kind of temperature um, but all i do is i plug this thing in turn it on and i just stick my jugs on it and it heats it up uh, now it does take a while you know it's probably going to take a few hours minimum i usually just 
leave them on there overnight just leave them on for you know if i if i know that i'm going to be using this resin for a little while i'll just like leave them on there uh, but it's a really cool way to go and uh, it's pretty simple so that link that i just put in the description is to these ones and they're super cheap uh, how much were they? so you get two of those i already my other one is is set up back there um, on that desk this one i don't i haven't really used yet we're talking 20 bucks you get two of them <laughs> so like not too bad you can also use this to to warm up a pressure pot um, if you're in a, working in a, a cool area um, you know and it's getting pretty cold or in, or if you just wanted to accelerate the the, the curing a little bit it's not going to get super hot it's not like it's going to be like 180 degrees or something like that but it will warm things up and i actually have some smaller ones that i keep under a couple of my pressure pots just in case just in case i need it you know i thought it'd be a kind of a smart idea so anyway, just wanted to share that with you. I wish I would have uh, used the thing to get it ready because I don't like, one of the problems I, I have with this is it's just a pain to stir. Um, like really, like you're kind of better off with these thick viscosity ones, just, I don't know. Depending on what you're doing, if you're gonna be pressurizing it and can get rid of the air bubbles, like you're almost better off just using a drill, mixing, you know, to mix it. Like it's like churning butter otherwise. So let's see here. Let me see if I missed anything. Lizard pad. Yeah, regular people heating pad. I have seen people do that, like put like just like heating blanket things around pressure pots also. Waterbed heater, that might work. I don't know what that is, but yeah. <laughs> yep, I, I like to put my jugs on the on the warm places too. Oh yeah, lizard. Yeah, I bet a, a waterbed heater might be kind of expensive. But anyway, all right. So let's let's get rolling on this. This is going to be fairly quick. Um, there's not going to be a whole lot of frills and, and craziness going on. So let's get to the overhead. I have already prepared all of these guys. I've I've sprayed them with uh, uh, stoner uh, mold release, um, ready to rock with that, and I've plugged them, and so we're ready. Now, here's <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> here's a couple things about these candy canes so number one this is like sugar all right so if it gets wet um, it's gonna melt basically so once it's a blank you don't want to wet sand these uh, right you know it, uh, without having ca glue so so you're gonna have to finish these however on the other hand they turn fine um, there's not really anything particularly wrong with them but I will caution you, I don't put, we're not going to load a ton of these things in here because this is a very weak material. And if you had tons of these things sitting on top, of, like right next to each other, all throughout the blank, that blank is probably just going to explode because there's just not enough resin holding everything together. So all I do is I put two or three together in my mold. Let's zoom in a little bit. Get these out of the way so you can see what I'm actually focusing on here. All right, so I put one in. The hardest part about doing these is I'm actually just going to go get the scissors. You got you to gotta take every single one of these things out of the, the little baggie. Kind of a pain. And they break a lot very easily. So what I do is I'll just kind of put them where, you know, like I think three is my number. I put three in each one of these. Oh, that one broke, see? Gotta be careful. See if we can get this a little bit better. There we go. And so what I'm trying to do is just keep them, keep quite a bit of, you know, some areas where there's gonna be lots of resin, all right? If you do that, everything's gonna be fine. So I, I go with three, I would maybe go with either one, two, or three. I don't think I'd really fill up more than these, than, you know, than three in one of these one and a half inch uh, molds. Um, but it's very simple, that's all, that's all I do. And they're ready. Shoya glitter and clear resin, nice. I haven't done, oh man, that one's broken too. Gretchen. I'm going to I'm going to have to have some words with Gretchen. She got me the box with all the broken ones. <laughs> That's another broken one. Jeez. I don't know. This is some off brand too. 
Gotta watch out for those off brands. All right, that one you probably can't see much of. Maybe. Let's see here. Interesting chewed pens, that's true. Um, now, I don't make pens out of these. Uh, I do, again, I don't really think that, uh, I don't think that there's gonna be enough material left. You know, by the time you've, you've turned down a pen, if you had to have enough of the candy cane in there, it's gonna be a significant portion of the thing that you're turning, and I think it's just gonna probably kind of fly apart. So I don't, I don't recommend doing pen blanks with these. Stoppers and other big things where you can, you know, you have lots of resin left around it. That's kind of the way that I would go with these. <clears throat> uh, and if, you, if all you're doing is like fully encapsulating it, so Jen was talking about doing a sphere. Um, you know, if you're just gonna like, fully cover it and you're not turning into it or anything like that it's just going to be kind of centered in the middle of something then you know as long as there's enough room but if you have fully covered everything then you can do whatever you want you know you don't have to worry about um, like anything at that point we have to worry because we're going to be turning into this but the cool thing is it turns fine um, I, I've never had one of these um, come apart or do anything, you know, weird on me, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, so, you know, hard candies like this, um, they're, they're doable for these kinds of projects, which is honestly kind of crazy. I really wouldn't have like, the first time I did this, I fully expected it to just blow up in my face. <laughs> I was like, oh, another one broke. I have to eat the bro I'm not eating. I don't like candy too much. Too many broken ones, man. Yeah, it's just the calories are just not worth it for me. Unfortunately. I would rather save my calories for the pumpkin pie or chocolate maybe. Actually, I don't know why I said that because I'm not really a big chocolate fan. Sometimes, but only at the holidays and it's more just because there's a box sitting there staring at me you know okay so i think we are ready here i'm super disappointed at how many broken ones are in here i mean there's a lot Okay, so let's get this out of the way. So what we're gonna do here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Um, I want to say that each one of these will take about 85 grams. All right, now the problem is this resin that I'm using is a volume measured, you know, with a cup, like equal parts kind of thing, not, not on a scale. So, but, um, and I need to look this up a little bit. I contacted Illumilite and I figured out what the weight measurement is for this resin. So, um, one thing I just want to mention is, you know, the, the, the label on this thing says you have to mix this or measure it, I, sh I should say, by volume, which means, you know, using one of these, using a, a measuring cup, and I would do like, you know, eight ounces and eight ounces, it's a one-to-one -one by volume, so eight ounces of each part um, by volume, right? Um, and you say you can't use a scale is, is kind of what a lot of people say. Um, that's not true. Um, technically, you just need to have the right ratio. And so one-to-one -one by volume is not necessarily gonna just equate to one-to-one -one by weight. Um, so there, if, you, if you need to get volume or, or weight measurements from a volume um, measured resin, a lot of times you can contact the manufacturer and find out 
what is the number, what is the weight ratio that I need to use. And it gets a little complicated, but basically these things have different weights. Um, and, and so you, you just need to you know, figure out what the right, right weight measurement is, which would equate to the volume. Hopefully I'm making sense with this, but um, you need to know what the right one is. And it's not just one to one, it's one point, dang it, where did I put that? <laughs> I gotta think about this. Okay, so I need to go into my email because I have the ratio somewhere in my emails. Yeah. Should have done this already uh, beforehand. Okay. Here we go. We got. I'm gonna give you the magic. This is super, super secret, guys. No, I'm just kidding. It's not secret at all. But I gotta find the right email. Ah, here we go. Okay, so, so both Amazing ClearCast and Amazing ClearCast Plus, all right, so we're using the ACC Plus version. What it is, the ratio, if you want to measure this by weight, is 100 grams part A, all right? So make sure that you're, you're looking. And I'm going to actually write this. I, I thought that I had written this on the jug. I wrote it somewhere, obviously not on the jug. Yeah, actually... I swear that I wrote it on the jug. Did I put it on the wrong bottle? Ha! <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so 100 grams part A to 80, let's see here, to 84 grams part B. All right. So, that makes things difficult and this is the reason why they're like it's a volume measurement one to one it just makes things a little bit easier right um, it's kind of hard to be like oh 184 what does that even mean all right so in this case we're going to need <clears throat> uh, 85 times six we're going to need about 500 grams of resin so one way to do that is we can kind of, it's almost one-to-one, -one, but it's not, right? So, you know, we can kind of figure out that it's gonna need probably, we can probably do 200. Two, see here, three, so three, about three times, 300. Four times three, hundred. It makes things not so much fun. So I'm gonna overshoot this a little bit, um, but I'm gonna go 300. If you can get away with it, or you don't really mind wasting, you can just multiply this number by, by like three, two, three, four. Um, that'll get you in the right range, right? There could be, I could figure out a, a system to, to like bring it down um, closer to the number that I need, but frankly, I just don't wanna do the math. <laughs> so. I'm gonna do 300 grams of the part A uh, to 252 grams of part B is what it's gonna equal out to. Yeah, you could do algebra and all that. I don't, I'm not doing algebra on a live stream. It's just not fun. So um, <clears throat> it should be a pretty good way to go. Gretchen, Tim's from Germany, nice. You're, you're in Germany? Sweet. That is on my list of places to go. We went to uh, uh, Switzerland. Um, when we went to Maker Central, we got to see Switzerland. You probably saw part of Germany from the top of uh, one of the, the Alps mountains some, <laughs> somewhere, but maybe more France, I guess. Yeah, so, well, and that's the thing, is if, if you get your jugs and you have different amounts in them, it's because whatever the ratio is, whether it doesn't matter if it's weight or, or volume, the two things, the two, the A and the B don't weigh, don't have the same specific gravity or like mass, I guess, or something like that. I don't even, I don't even honestly know exactly what the right, correct term is, but they don't weigh the same. You, you know, um, if you're measuring something by weight and it's like two to one, then one of them weighs half as much possibly or something you know like 
depending on how things work, it, it's going to be slightly different. It's not like A is the same exact weight as the part B. So um, you'll see that in, in the jugs where one's a little higher than the other a lot of times, and it's kind of a kind of a weird thing. Now, I think if you're doing it by volume and it says it's one-to-one, -one, then it should be equal. And if it's not, then you probably have problems. <laughs> Somebody shorted you or, or stole some resin from you. <laughs> so... Yeah, but if it's if it's a by weight measurement, you know, you may see some different things if it's like one to one by weight. So, uh, alumilite clear, slow, um, it's go, it's going to be a little different when you see it in the jugs when you get it on a brand new one. I might be totally wrong on that, but either way, I just wanted to share that if you do need to do it by weight, um, you can do it with the ACC plus because we now have the, the special secret code. Pretty fun. Yeah, mass per unit of volume. It might be specific gravity. I think that might actually be the correct ish. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, this isn't a science channel. We're gonna just mix some resin and dump it. It's gonna be fun. Okay, so we need, uh, let's see, today is 12, seven. Is that right, 12, seven? Um, we're doing candy cane stoppers. All right, so, and we're all, we're just, this is going to be one one thing and we're going to be done today. It's going to be pretty simple. We can mix it all up, pour it all at once. I'm not going to do anything different. Um, what I like to do is add some micro starlight glitter uh, in there. I, it's just, oh, it just makes it perfect. It looks like it's snowing around the, the little candy canes. So this is the micro starlight glitter and it's available on my website. I love this stuff. It just adds that perfect amount of, awesomeness just a little extra in something clear um, and so here's a link I don't there's a link in the description uh, below the video here but here's a link in the in the chat as well to that if you want to pick it up and uh, these are this is new sizes uh, so for anybody that didn't realize um, you're getting literally seven times as much now for the same price um, maybe a little like a, like 10 cents more um, I think I just rounded it up um, new jar, n totally way more amount. Um, so I'm super excited about that. I got a, a better deal on ordering that stuff. And so I can pass the discounts on to you. See if I, here's the old one, guys. You're going to laugh. You're going to be like, wow, what is going on here? I'm totally bucking the trend. I know inflation is rampant, but prices are going down at ResinWorks Studio, okay? Look at how small it used to be. Now you get this huge tub of it. It's pretty sweet. So anyway, that's enough of my sales pitch. Get your starlight glitters. And that goes for both the micro and the regular starlight, by the way. <clears throat> they both come in the new fancy jars. And these jars are so much easier to open. Oh my God. And the other thing is I like the, the size of this jar because you can actually fit a full-size popsicle if you're going to dump tons of it in there. So it just, seriously, there's like no disadvantage at all. It's awesome. Okay, so we're doing five times about 85 grams. I think that's probably more than we even need, whatever. But we are going to use Amazing Clearcast Plus. And we're doing the one and a half inch um, PVC pipe. All right, so we're gonna mix up. It's 100 to 84, like I said. So we're gonna be mixing up 300 grams of part A. A, if I can write. And what did I say? 252 grams of part B. And then we're just gonna add, and, and I, I highly recommend, don't overdo it with the micro starlight glitter. You don't need much to get the effect that you want. Um, if you put too much in, it kind of takes away and it, it, it's almost hard to see through. So just a very little bit, we're gonna do a small scoop, is what I call it, <laughs> of uh, micro starlight glitter. Okay, so we got our game plan written down. Game plan is written down. Uh, what's happening here? 
Yeah, I'm not a fan of volume pouring. I think it's kind of stupid. I would much rather know exactly how much is in there. <laughs> I don't like these lines. And one of the other problems is you can't trust these whatever random mixing cups. They're not, they're not necessarily accurate. You know, I don't know if you know that they aren't um, in some cases. So you're, you know, if, if, if you've done everything and you're still having like issues for some reason, your cup measurement things, the, the graduation lines might be screwed up on it or not like not accurate. So you got to kind of watch out with some of this stuff. I would much rather just grab me some resin that that's one of the one, one reason why I, I really like Alumilite Clear Slow. Oh, I'm going to take my watch off. I don't want to get resin on that. All right, let's see here. Yeah, you could use rice and do all those things. I'd rather just, like I said. Uh, now, one thing that you can do also, if you know how many grams, you know, so we know that it's going to be like 500 grams is what I need. Um, another thing that you can do, uh, but I always find that it never it never works out with these graduations on half of these cups. You really, I think that you can pretty much just flip flop grams for milliliters. But finding milliliters and and all you know, finding the right thing where there's there's correct amounts of um, you know, like this doesn't even have milliliters on it. All right, I don't think. I don't know what these, these are just numbers. These are ounces, which I could convert milliliters to ounces, but I mean, we're talking like five steps now <laughs> into this. Just tell me, so this one has um, ounces and, and grams. This would work out. Like I could do 250 and, and 500, because it's a one-to-one. -one. That would work out in this case. That And that would actually probably be even better, a better way to go, but <clears throat> just for the sake of having fun let's uh let's let's use the let's use the the numbers let's see here All right, <clears throat> so we're putting 300 grams of part A. Oh, you guys can't see. Thick maple syrup. All right, so I went a little over. I'm not particularly worried about that. We can pull it out with uh, with one of these little sticks here. 300.3, good enough. <clears throat> and then we need 252 grams. I'm just gonna double check the math on that. 84, right? 84 times three, 252, okay. Yeah, I think it's much, much better. I, you don't really need an expensive scale to get repeatable results. Um, <clears throat> honestly, even with like the super cheap ones, the $10, you could go get yourself a $10 scale like this, and it's gonna be pretty accurate. I mean, they make these scales pretty darn good at this point. Uh, okay, so 252, part B. All right, guys, so question of the day. Question of the day, folks. Oh, I went over. Oops.
Question of the day. I think we're pretty close here. The 0.3 gram discrepancy. Um, so here's the question of the day, guys. What tool do you want for Christmas? What are you hoping for? Is there a tool that you want? What have you been keeping your eye on? You've had your eye on it all year, and you're like, yep, that's going to be for Christmas. Maple syrup is the best kind. Although I do like blueberry, i got to be honest. Yeah, grams to milliliters is a one-to-one -one conversion. The, the only issue is the, the specific gravity, or I don't know, one of these numbers may not work. Like, it's a con direct conversion in the sense of water, but... I don't know. I, I don't know exactly. It's probably fine either way. In this case, it's probably about the same. What I would recommend is if you're going to just convert straight from grams to milliliters, I would recommend adding a little extra just in case. You don't want to under pour it like 10 grams. That's just, or, you know, whatever. Some small amount that you got to like mix up more. Just add a little bit extra. Have a happy fun cup ready and, and, and dump it, you know. Just to make sure. So you want to mix this up really well. Um, another problem is I, I use these HDPE stir sticks and they're like bendy. So <laughs> it's like, I really want to find like a metal spatula thing that, 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 that's not going to like hurt my fingers and hand. <clears throat> You bought a new drill, but have to wait. Which which drill did you get? A drill press or a, like a hand drill? <clears throat> That's cool. Kim's getting a pressure pot for Christmas. Woo! That's a good present. That's a good one. <clears throat> Terry's getting a, a California Air Tools pot. Sweet. Yeah, I, I buy my presents all year long for the shop, usually. I don't have anything, let's see, this year. <clears throat> I'll tell you what I want, but I'm sure as heck not going to be buying it. Um, I want a new bandsaw. I really hate the bandsaw that I have. So maybe next year, I don't know. We'll see. Clyde gets a week of camping, that's cool. Cruise to Australia, yeah, I'll take that too. That's up my alley. Where, uh, where are you going in Australia? Where, what's, what's like stops? Oh, I knew Ryobi, the one that walked off. Oh, that sucks. A mini split. What is that mini split? What are we? What is that? That's like not registering in my brain, but I I should know what it is. Mini split. Oh, okay, yeah, air conditioner. I was like, that was so weird. I was like, I don't even. That's not even registering in my brain. <laughs> I was like, what tool is that? Mini split. That's cool. Yeah, that'll be nice. More molds, yeah. You got the train trip, yeah, I know about the train trip, that's cool. No, I didn't get a new bandsaw. I got, what did I get? What have I gotten lately? I fixed part of that bandsaw and it was a complete waste of money. I bought new, um, new guide like a new guide set up from Carter and it was like $300 and not worth the money. <laughs> Should have just bought new bearings for the old one. They were seized up though, so I didn't know. And I'm thinking, oh, Carter makes some, I have some Carter, like the, the single guide thing. And it was like a super massive improvement. And I'm thinking, oh, Carter has like a replacement. It's probably way better and like toolless. No, it's everything requires a tool. It's janky. And I'm like, this sucks. So, no, I, I just don't like that. I want to get a Laguna, maybe a Rikon. I always wanted, so I used to be, like, heavy into, like, you know, woodworking, like, furniture making, and, um, you know, so resawing lumber and stuff was a big priority for me. 
So back in the day, I always wanted a, a, a one of the Italian made Lagunas uh, bandsaws. And so that had been on my list, but I just flat out can't justify spending $3,500, $4,000 on a bandsaw that I like cut aluminum honeycomb with and a blank every once in a while. Just not worth it because I don't need that kind of accuracy or it just, it would have been a nice one though. Sydney, Melbourne, Tasmania, and Eden, then east coast of New Zealand. That's a great cruise. That's sweet. No, that's a, that's a, that's a good, it is, a, I would say it is a tool, Chris. <laughs> I wish I could get one in, in my area. That's, that's a great thing for a shop. Yeah, tools not in the budget. 40 plus, eight, are you actually getting that, Dennis? That would be sweet. I, I wouldn't mind. I don't know if I want to live in Wisconsin personally, but 40 acres in a shop. Yep. Oh, I got a drill press. Yeah. Um, I got the um, Nova Voyager. I got that. But man, that, I mean, I, I got it like last year, but technically I ordered it two years ago. <laughs> I ordered it at like the beginning of the pandemic and all the shipping issues they were having. I didn't get it for a year. And then, and this is why I'm mad, right? So, so I had to replace all the electronics on this thing already. It took a year or eight, like eight months to a year to get this thing. And then it breaks in like six to eight months. And I'm like, whatever. I was not happy. But yeah, bandsaw has been on the list, but it, the, that's what I was saying is like the bandsaw is a tool that it, I, that one cuts. I just hate it. So I don't, you know, I've been always saying like, I just wish it would blow up and break, you know, the guides were a problem though. And I'm like, well, maybe I'll spend 300. Well, that was a waste of 300 bucks on those guides. Okay. So that is mixed up. I've been talking that is more than mixed up. So again, you don't need a lot of this micro starlight glitter. I, I mean, at all, all right? That is probably plenty um, for all of these things, all right? So just a tiny bit. The thing is, these things are so tiny, they're like little tiny, you know, micro points of light, but in the blank, it's gonna, there's gonna be enough of them to just add a little bit of twinkle, you know? That's all you want. You don't want it to overtake the blank. You just wanna add these little kind of prisms of light you know kind of blinking at you almost like stars and so i think that's going to be plenty right there don't need to overdo it it's just a little little effect goes a long way okay and uh the micro starlight that stuff will stay suspended in pretty much any resin um, so there's really no reason to sit here and wait for any special temperature, you know, or anything like that. Uh, we don't need to wait for the resin to thicken up or do anything. Um, you know, we've got our stuff mixed in, the, the resin is fully mixed, so we can just pour this right away and move on, right? Um, the only reason that you would wanna like wait till the end of the working time, like, you know, we do for certain things, um, is if you're mixing a bunch of colors together, um, you don't, that'll, you know, waiting till the end of the working time when it's thickened up and close to the, the you know, the point where it's gonna turn solid, um, that's gonna keep your colors from bleeding. Uh, and if you were like, you know, like last, last week we did the glitter and we waited, um, that stuff, you know, could sink. Um, you, don't, you don't want to, or float even, if, it's, if it was lighter than the resin. So in that case, it's not a bad idea to, to wait till the end of the working time and, you know, lock that in. Um, but for stuff like this, uh, the micro starlight glitter is going nowhere. Um, it's not going to sink or float or do anything. Um, and there's no other reason. It's just clear resin. So you can just pour it right away. And frankly, in some cases, you may want to pour something that was just clear or, you know, maybe just one color uh, right away. Um, as long as there's no chance of, you know, color bleed or any of that stuff. Um, if you're pouring it into something where there's a lot of little crevices and things, then you'd technically get a better it's it's a better idea to pour it earlier when it's thinner viscosity rather than the end of the working time when it's thick um, so that it'll kind of 
easily flow in and around everything if you've got some kind of weird you know wood chunks or, or something going on sometimes thinner viscosity is actually a better time to pour and you just have to balance that with is anything gonna you know sink or float or is you know are we pouring two colors together because at that point then you got to kind of figure out which is more important you know not having color bleed or having thinner viscosity resin so you know but if there's no no color bleed or no suspension that you need to do suspending objects then pour it right you know just pour it and move on no need to wait kind of filled that one up to the brim I do want to get these kind of full. Thick and chunky. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to kind of top these guys off. Should have plenty of resin. Got one more to fill. That was actually a pretty good amount of resin. There's not that much left over, really. I thought it was going to be more. That's okay. We got Happy Fun Cup. This is the last one. This is cup number 10. So once this one's done, the subscription boxes are going to be full. We got all of them. Happy Fun Cups. I'll just add a little bit more to this one. It's the the mold is a little bit taller than the other ones. Whatever, it's cool. There we have it. Wipe that off. Wipe the rim off a little bit. And I'm gonna get a little. I got a little rack here. I think I'll switch to the other camera here. What are we reminding? <laughs> oh, the drill press, yeah. That, it, I mean, it's nice. I like it when it works um, for the most part. Um, to be honest, though, there's a few things that I'm like, eh. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Rack them up. We got our things on the rack there. I'm just going to go with, no, I'm going to, yeah, let's see here. I'm going to go with this pot. I had to think for a minute. Put that guy in there. Um, and one thing I want to mention if, if you're having any issues with the lid not sealing properly on your, your pressure pot, make sure that you're, you're doing two screws, two opposing screws, like tighten them kind of evenly down. And not all the way, you don't need to crank it all the way, just, just get them you know, kind of cinched a little bit. Then swap to the other two and tighten those two down evenly. Not only is it not going to, you know, twist on you if you don't have it bolted down as much, but you're 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 applying like even pressure 
um, you know, you're, you're, you're doing it kind of evenly rather than doing like one at a time in a, in a ring or just randomly, um, like one at a time, it, it, it's like you're cinching down over here and it's kind of bending the, the lid a little around um, by doing it that way. But if you can do it evenly two at a time, you might find that your lid um, actually fits better or seals better. And then we'll pop, pop our, our air on there. So this is going up to 60 PSI. This is the, the California Air Tools two and a half gallon pot. Um, and Turner's Warehouse has these. I got links in the description. I love this pot, it's awesome. Um, and it's ready out of the box. Like you literally open the box and you can plug it in. The only thing you have to do is just set the regulator. Um, but I have a video that, that shows how to do all that stuff and it's, it takes two seconds, literally. Um, but yeah, so if you're, if you're having some weird kind of leaks or things going on, um, you know, try to tighten that lid, you know, evenly down. Um, another thing is you may want to try a different position with the lid. Um, it may fit better onto the rim. Um, you know, maybe they're both kind of just slightly kind of bent or one's bent a little bit, um, but they may follow each other, fit better basically if you, and, and with this one, there's like four different positions you could put it at. Um, if you find one that works, then mark, like works best, then mark your, your pot. Uh, put a little mark on both the lid and the, the bottom so you know which way to put it on every time and it, it'll work better. And then the only other thing that, that can sometimes happen, because somebody was saying that they just bought a brand new pressure pot and they're like putting a new gasket in, which you shouldn't need to do that. Um, the only other thing is you may need to tighten these things down um, harder, uh, which you may need to get like a wrench if you don't have enough strength to get them tightened down for some reason. Um, you know, you can use something, get a little leverage on these things and, and get them a little tighter and that might help out. So just a couple little, little random like tips to maybe help out a little bit if you're having some issues. But I do have a video that kind of covers, you know, a lot of the common, you know, leak points and, and how to check um, the plumbing uh, things for, for leaks and all that kind of stuff. That way you can kind of, you know, narrow down, well, okay, the safety's not leaking, this little thing's not leaking, nothing on the regulator or anything is leaking, then it must be happening, you know, from the lid possibly. And if that's the case, then like I said, you, you know, you can do it that way. Now, one thing that sometimes can help is if you put a little Vaseline on the, the gasket, if let's say that the gasket's just kind of old and kind of crusty, um, adding a little Vaseline on that thing, that may actually get you a seal. So, I think those are pretty much all the tips and things, but generally you should be able to find a leak and fix it on a, on a pressure pot. I just want to, you know, make, make sure you guys know that. Let's see here. Yeah, this video will be available tomorrow. That's what we were talking about. I'm not, I'm not sure. Let's see. Uh, John's curious about food and resin. Does the food go bad? Um, I don't know. I think so. <laughs> I think most of the, I haven't actually done, uh, well, okay. So I guess maybe you're talking about like these candy canes. They're not really going to go bad. I've never seen any of these go bad, but if you, you know, encased, uh, an egg I've seen, you know, Ben, I not, frankly, I don't, I can't remember, um, if it went bad or not. I haven't seen the year, year after a year, but I'm pretty sure that, you know, like if you just took a piece of pizza and then just encased it in, in, in resin, I think it's going to deteriorate. I, I think it can go bad within the resin, but candy canes don't really go bad, you know, so those will be okay. Never had a problem with those. But again, like I said at the beginning, so we're making turning blanks out of these, right? And they will turn okay. Um, as long as you haven't like way overloaded the entire, you know, like the whole blank isn't candy canes at that point. There's not enough resin to, to keep it together. Um, these will turn fine. You can turn into the candy canes, but make sure you do not wet sand the candy cane because it'll just dissolve it. Water, it's just sugar, you know. So it, it'll work fine for, for the turning for this project, but just watch out. Certain types of foods and things, you know, won't work, uh, you know, with resin. Yeah, I think I, yeah, I, I don't know any specifics. I know Ben over at Ben's Works, he's done a few things like that. Peter Brown probably has as well. Um, I, I just, I can't remember. I've seen the casting. They're like, oh, does it work? 
And then they cast it and it casts okay, but I haven't seen the the like year, you know, okay, it's been a year, did it work? I know Ben did an egg, like he cast a full egg and then cut it in half later. And I, I'm pretty sure that was pretty disgusting. So I don't think, I, I, I'm not really interested in doing that, that kind of experiment on my ch channel. I just don't care if it works or not because I don't want to do it. But um, yeah, so you're okay with these kind of candy th type things though. So anyway, oh, Anne wants all your tools sharpened. Now that's a good, that's a good one. I like that. That can be a pain. Jen needs resin, yeah. That's not a bad one either. Um, I'm actually pretty stocked up right now for, for resin. Like I said, a bandsaw. I, so it's tough because there was a lot of tools. I, I used to be like a tool hoarder. I would buy like every tool even if I didn't really, I probably wasn't really going to use it ever. I like to kind of collect things like that, but just don't need as many of the tools. Um, and I tend to just buy things because I, I need it for like, you know, a video or, you know, stuff. So I, I buy things throughout the year. <clears throat> Peter did a pizza? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, Evan and Caitlin did. I, they, I think they've done a couple, possibly. Strawberry and banana. Remarkably preserved, huh? Interesting. I don't know. You, one of the tough things is there, most foods like have water in them, so or moisture of some sort. And so that's kind of challenging with resin casting a lot of times. It, it can, uh, if you can't dehydrate things, then you, you can run into issues with that. And so there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you, you can totally dry citrus. If you dry it out, you're, you're fine. At that point, it shouldn't really go bad because there's really nothing in there to go bad, I don't think. So I think that's part of the problem is the moisture issues. Um, but, you know, I mean, you can dry flowers out. They work fine. I don't know why citrus would be any different. And I'm, that's actually something I might have done a long time ago. I, I can't remember now. But anyway, so uh, these things are going to be available. Uh, so we'll, we'll be turning one of them up, I think. How is this going to work? I got to think for a minute, guys. Um... You know what? I've already turned one of these. So I think what I might do is just post a link on Saturday and, and cancel Saturday's live stream. One of the things that I've been trying to work on and, and I, I haven't had enough time to do is, is work on the mystery box, the, the fifth one. So I think what I'm going to do is we're going to cancel Saturday's live stream. Um, like I said, I've already done these types of like turnings i have videos of these so you can go and search for i did an ornament i think i've done a stopper as well already so there's not much i can really turn on saturday that's going to be anything new or exciting but um i'll, I'll share links to those videos and then i think what i'm going to do is work on those uh the mystery box video on saturday instead so i hope that nobody's too disappointed with that but i think it i think honestly in the long run it's going to be better for everybody because um, you'll get new content um, of something. And I think you guys are really going to like Mystery Box number five. So, yeah, yeah he did a, like, McDonald's, didn't he? Um, so John was asking, what causes pressure pots to explode? If you overpressurize them, um, then the material can, you know, basically fail. And it just, you know, you pop a hole in it and the lid can go flying or whatever. Um, for the most part, they're safe as long as you stay below the maximum PSI. So for this California Air Tools pot, the max is six, 60 PSI. Don't go over that. And then for my other ones, um, these are uh, another brand. Um, I can go to 80 in these, but you know, you, there's really not much advantage, much higher than 50 or 60. So you know, just, just stay in that range, but make sure that you're not going above what the manufacturer of your pot states the max PSI is. Don't do that. You'll be fine. You'll be good to go. Let's see here. Ah, yeah, you need to get some resin too, Kim. Ooh. 500 pounds of Choya. That's a good gift. I think so. Nice. Yeah, five pounds would be pretty good. 
So anyway, yeah, so we'll, we'll cancel this Saturday's stream. Like I said, I've, I've already kind of turned some of these things up. This is something that I do every year. Uh, but I did want to mention these, these blanks will be available on my website as soon as I can get them, you know, like cleaned up and ready. Um, they'll be available probably this weekend, um, sometime like Saturday. Um, so be looking for that. I'll, I'll post about those as well. Um, don't forget the, the holiday glitter blanks are available on my website as well. I added seven more to the inventory this morning. Um, so if you were on the email list and looked, uh, there was only three when that went out. So you might've seen that there was no inventory on those, but I added more, I forgot to add more. I, I poured another batch um, la a couple days ago, basically. So we got some of those, we got all kinds of different stuff going on um, for, for like the holiday theme blanks. And once those are gone, they're gone. So head over there, check those out. We got the pumpkin, kind of pumpkin pie looking, pumpkin spice look. Uh, we have a, a holiday pine cone blank. We have, and stoppers. And we have like the, the 3D printed candy cane stripes look. Um, so there's a few blanks. Those might be gone actually, I'm not sure. Um, so again, there's links to everything down in the description that we use today. Um, and I think that's about it guys. So um, I'm hoping that I'm gonna get, uh, I ordered some, some cool ornament um, silicone molds from uh, uh, Philip over at Danner Builds. I'm gonna drop a link. You guys gotta, I said it on the other stream today too. You gotta check these things out. They're so much fun. Um, so they're like multi-layered, three-dimensional kind of uh, molds that there's like lots of different ones. And I, I bought a couple of the ornament ones. One's the Santa skull and one of them's like a, um, kind of like a snow globe looking kind of thing. Um, so here's a, uh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get you to the silicone mold. 3D, there we are, 3D silicone mold. Um, they're on the way, they're shipping and I'm hoping that I get them this weekend. So next week, I think what we're gonna be doing is playing with those new molds, uh, making some cool um, <clears throat> little ornament things. So hopefully you guys will come join the fun next Wednesday. That'll be at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Again, no stream on Saturday and I'm, I'm just gonna put on uh, social media links to, um, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> yep, it must be the end of the stream. Um, I'll put links on social media to the videos that I find of turning candy cane blanks. And I think that's about it. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Still kind of getting over the COVID thing, I guess. I don't know. Dry throat too. Uh, all right. So I think that's about it, guys. So thank you all for joining the fun tonight. I saw there was a, also a, I heard a super chat. Hold on a minute. Who super chatted? I know there was a super chat. What happened to it? Lorenzix, thank you for the super chat. I heard it and I and I didn't get a chance to, to mention anything. So I appreciate you super chatting, helping support the show. Uh, and I think that's about it. So again, thank you guys for joining the fun tonight. Have a great rest of your evening and I will see you guys on the next live stream. That'll be on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. So I'll see you there. We'll make some ornaments. Hopefully the, 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 the package will come by then. So anyway, guys, have a good night and I'll see you in the next stream.